Now, the rest of the story. Bessie Whitehead, fifth grade teacher, had had enough. Lewis, she exclaimed, you will stay after class, and you can write on the blackboard 150 times, I am a bad boy. And he did. Now, Lewis was not really a bad boy. He was simply a prankster, a cut-up-a-class clown. But as a teen, Lewis fell in love with a bad boy sport, boxing. It was a Patterson, New Jersey neighbor, Johnny Lane, who initially inspired him. Johnny was on the fast track to fame as a prize fighter, tremendously impressed by Lewis's natural ability. Get yourself a manager, Johnny Lane advised. And Lewis did. His friend Abe Green... And then Lewis picked a striking new last name for himself and started training. Conservative parents would disapprove of his career move, so Lewis beseeched everybody he knew who knew not to tell Mom and Dad. And through ten triumphant professional fights, nobody did. Then one day, Lewis's Uncle Mike went to Lewis's father. Uncle Mike said, Hey, I have tickets for the big boxing match in Ringwood tonight. Lewis's father, Sebastian, shrugged, so. But Mike went on to explain that though he realized Sebastian was generally uninterested in sports, there was this new fighter, Lou King, whom everybody was talking about. Lou King, everybody agreed, was coming on strong in the fight game, and he was boxing that very evening. Sebastian, rather than argue with Mike, said, okay, he'd go. And imagine his surprise when the fight announcer that night called the name Lou King and into the ring climbed Sebastian's own son. Well, Lou King won fight number 11. It was the one the following morning he was destined to lose. For by the time the victorious but battle-scarred boy came down to the breakfast table, his mother, Helene, had heard all about the night before. To Helene's credit, she did not shout, nor sigh, nor cry, but she expressed her sentiments this way. To Lewis, she said, Do you remember when you were in the fifth grade and Miss Whitehead was very upset with you? Lewis nodded. You remember what she made you write on the blackboard a hundred and fifty times? Lewis remembered. Well, said Helene, her gaze at once very hot and very cold. That's the way I feel about you right now. Lewis spared his mother the trouble of repeating the hated phrase. I am a bad boy, he offered quietly. And that was all anybody ever said on the subject thereafter. It was plenty. Lewis never put on boxing gloves again. But the self-deprecatory sentence that he had had to write so many times on the blackboard for Miss Whitehead was to follow Lewis everywhere he went for the rest of his life. There was no telling what kind of a prize fighter he'd have made, considering his athletic ability and his early success, perhaps a very good one. And yet in another profession he became unique, irreplaceable, one of a kind. Not as Lou King, not even under his real name, Louis Francis Cristillo. For once upon a tidal wave of laughter, there was a comedy team comprised of two verbal sparring partners, Bud Abbott, and a self-described bad boy, Lou Costello. Abbott and Costello, now you know the rest of the story.